Hey, this is Mike. Hey, this is Kaz, and you are listening to Two Book Watch Snobs, the only watch podcast that knows no wife, no dog, no home. You have nothing, John. You have made it all the way to episode 288, or 280. Ah, I almost I almost messed it up. I caught it. 280 of the Two we, Book Watch Snobs podcast. We've been out Hello. of practice. I think I had to learn how to, how to do a lot of this stuff again. It's okay. I also have to do it at half volume because my son is asleep. Just right okay. there. Just so, over here. We can still <laughs> we can still hear you. Can you hear me? Am I real? <laughs> the uh this is gonna be a ton of fun. 280 episodes in. We have uh, had a little bit of an unintended hiatus from about mid-September to now. The time of this recording, it's it's November 10th, uh, uh, 2024. Mike and I are gonna talk a little bit about that. We're getting into a little bit of personal stuff, specifically in regard to 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 me. Uh just a really quick shout out. Thanks for everyone that did reach out. That did reach out to see if we were okay, especially because one of us is on the west coast of Florida. So, yeah, you people are so nice, um, <clears throat> right? I don't get it's, it. It's funny. You, it's you, funny you when know you know we're not real. We're not real. We're not a real part of your lives. You have real people around you. We're just yeah. two assholes on the internet, folks. Folks were very kind, and uh, you, you tend to forget friends. about that. When you're when yeah. you're doing a watch podcast, that you're just like, oh, maybe people listen, maybe people don't, but yeah, <laughs> some very very nice folks out there. Yeah, around and through the slew of big zero emails and messages, we 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 have some very nice. <laughs> still got an increasing. Them, they've been increasing lately. They still come in. I'm telling you, man, this is gonna be a ton of fun. Like episode two hundred and eighty of the Two Book Watch House podcast. Michael and I, we were trying to figure out something fun we wanted to do. We wanted to do something fun. We wanted to do something super geeky and nerdy, but we also wanted something that was really special. I think to to, to both of us, we'll get a little bit more about, about that. Um, and so we decided to take two things that we loved and combine them, coalesce them into, if you will, into the diamond that is episode two hundred and eighty. There's watches, and it is Disney. So henceforth, episode 282 of Watch the Podcast will be known as the history of the Mickey Mouse watch. In broader terms, the Disney watch, but we're going to be specifically focusing on the idea of, of the, 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 the Mickey Mouse watch, which I, we're going to talk about this. I think it's really interesting. I don't think people realize how ingrained the concept of, of early Disney merchandising. So I'm talking, you know, um, 1920s, 1930s. So this is pre-Snow White. This is pre-opening of actual Disneyland on the West Coast. The 20s and 30s, the idea of, of how ingrained Disney product merchandising is with not just American manufacturing, but American watchmaking. So we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. But first, Michael, we have to honor tradition. Do you want to do an audio wrist check with me? For the first time in like fucking six or eight weeks? I've got something cool. Something I, I bet haven't... you do. It's not, it's not mine, but it is, it is the first time uh, this watch will make it on the show. And actually... Before I do that, I want to pull up a <clears throat> a piece from our site because we wrote about um, a while back. Okay. The predecessor to this watch. Oh. There's some suspense now. I'm sorry. There is I'm some trying suspense. To, I'm trying no, to be a producer just... at the same time. Oh. <sighs> okay. Who's wait? So it's not your watch? Did you did you steal it? Did you steal a watch? I didn't steal it. They they were <laughs> they were kind enough to send it over. But okay, I am that's wearing, nice. oh my gosh, I got to do the share thing now. Of course. Come on, Michael. It clearly has been a while. You can tell. That's okay. Just happy so to be on the airwaves. I am wearing the Raven Endeavor 2. <laughs> that's, I love this color. So that's, that's why I, um, <clears throat> I actually went for this one when uh, the team team wrote to me and said you know do you want to check one out and they have a ton of cool colors so you see some more traditional colors here like this blue i'm sure is very popular uh the yellow these are all especially the the yellow and the orange that's like tough dive watch colors Mm -hmm. but this this pistachio stood out to me it's interesting oh sorry this is i've never i'd never seen anything like that before so i just had to check it out and um Let's see, I can probably, yeah, there it is right here. How cool screen. is that? Uh, we've, we've had Steve from Raven on the show before. And I think when he was on the show, we were, at, we were talking to him about 
micro brands and colors. And he always said he wasn't like a big, I remember him saying he never wanted to do big out there colors. Like, you know what I mean? And so this, this isn't necessarily an out there color, but it certainly isn't necessarily what I would have expected them to do, which is not a bad thing. I think this is beautiful. You know, what is crazy to me, let's see, can I move to another tab? I can't. Let me stop sharing. There is, when we were in San Francisco, um, gosh, what was it, 2019? There we go. I think so. Something you, like that? What you see here on screen yep. is, is oh, the yeah. original Endeavor. And th- there's such different watches visually. I just wanted to show side by side so people can see how this thing evolved. Uh, and the, they're both watches with a lot of character. I think Raven, you know, when we think about that brand, we think about the Trekker. It's such a hit. Um, and they still make them. But for something slightly more out there or modern and beefy, uh, the Endeavor came came into the collection. And I, right. I hadn't really thought much about that watch uh, since, you know, seeing this blue one that we have have here that we saw in person. Mm. Um, but what we have now is a total redesign, I think. It is kind of big for my wrist. Um, How big is prob- it? Uh Let's see. So the diameter is 42 millimeters, but there's okay. something about there's something about the boxiness that makes it feel larger, like a 43 or a 44. Um, and it doesn't sit on my wrist as well as it, it does in this photo that you're seeing here. It still feels okay. it feels like a bit much for me, but it is a very well built watch. Um, 47 lug to lug. And let's see, in this one, you have the Miyota 9015. You know, it feels pretty beefy because those lugs are pretty beefy. Like the space from the thinnest part of the lug to the bezel is still pretty big. It's probably taking up a lot of space on your wrist because it's just a, a lot of material. Yeah. At least and, just basing off the, the, the look of it here. And this does have uh, these quick release... Uh, oh, bless spring bars and it has the node x uh quick adjust clasp that we're oh seeing God. In, in more and more watches so why not <clears throat> it's happening it's um, happening that's pretty I cool dig it. you know it, it may not be that it's uh it's large but it's heavier than than i expected um mm. and you could probably wear this on on rubber or nato and it'll feel this thing would probably is, kill on rubber. I yeah. would totally throw it on rubber. Yeah. So I, I've been digging it for a bit. It's a beefy dive watch with a helium escape valve on the side. Oh, uh, good. Thank goodness. I thank goodness. That. Yeah, I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just something cool, something fun from the brand. Um, I'm also keeping an eye on those those new trekkers. They seem like a lot of fun and. Hopefully we I'm still can... partial to the ventures. Remember the ventures? Yeah, you had one for a while, right? Or I had one for a while. I don't know if you still do. This kind of this kind of feels like that same same sort of heft with with the ventures. Okay. Yeah. What's so, the venture? Yeah. I don't think the, the I don't think the venture is around anymore. Is it? I don't think so. Yeah. It had a it 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 a lot of people drew comparisons between it and like the Tudor Ranger because of that hour hand. You know what yeah. I mean? But like to me, they're different watches. That that thing was that thing was a ton of fun. Um hell yeah. You're enjoying your time with it? Is it is it is it is it in for review? It's in for review. It's in for a a, a podcast, you know, kind of visit, yes. you know. Hell yeah. Whatever. They're 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 really a nice team and they they share stuff with us pretty often. Heck yeah. Super cool. Thanks. Thanks, Raven. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. Very cool. What, Hell yeah. What about you? I'm just wearing my Grand Seiko. I wanted to see if I could have my wrist disappear into my wall. It just looks like there's a hole in my wrist when you get Pretty it close. on my wall. <laughs> I didn't realize this color might be my number 23. It's just kind of everywhere. And I didn't realize how much I gravitated towards it and how much of my life is dictated 
I don't know if anyone is even understanding what movie I'm referencing, I but it's a Jim Carrey movie. I forgot about that movie. <laughs> this is a Jim I can't Carrey even movie remember if it was good. I, I, don't, I, I don't remember if it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember it. Um, but this color is just everywhere for me. But no, I'm wearing my Grand Seiko. I, I love this thing still. It is, it is, it is like coming home every time I put it on. This is the SBG V233. It is technically a JDM titanium quartz quartz Grand Seiko. It is the um, 9F quartz uh, 9F82, I believe. So it's a bit of an older 9F uh, uh, quartz movement. Um, I love it. I think it's perfect. This is if you've been watching the show for a while, you've been seeing this watch for for a bit now. I have a write up on the website. You can go and check it out if you just Google. I don't know TBWS Grand Seiko or just Grand Seiko Quartz. You'll probably um, you'll probably see it somewhere in there. And I got some more photos and everything like that. But this watch is really interesting. I really wish. I really oh, I really wish Grand Seiko did another version of this. It can be the exact same watch, everything the same, except I really just wanted to have Arabic numerals. I love the movement. I love. Oh yeah, here it is, Pikachu. I love the movement. I love the case. I love this heritage case. Uh, the, the, this this style of case is forty millimeters. It hugs my wrist perfectly. Um, I just wish it had Arabic markers. The only thing I would knock is just and this is this is actually the the the, the gap in my everyday wear, wearing experience that the 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 the, the Monta Triumph fills. The Monta Triumph is an Arabic numeral watch that is. Uh, not similar dimensions, but similar sort of, for me, at least wearing experience. This is a little bit heavier, obviously. I love this photo. So the background for this photo, that's actually the paper they include as part of the wrapping for Grand Seiko box. Really? It's this very, yeah, <clears throat> it's this beautifully um, uh, like like Bible paper thin parchment with this like veining going through it. It's uh, And like as I was unboxing it, I'm like, dude, I'm doing a photo with this paper. Just this fucking paper is gorgeous. <laughs> and so I still have it. Still have the paper with the box. You know, yeah, this thing is great. Yeah. You uh, <clears throat> you let me wear it for a bit the last time I was in Florida, and I still think totally I broke not it. your watch. You didn't break it. They changed the battery. It was the bad. The battery. It was just bad timing. The battery. I remember I had I I I I I was in New York and I went to the boutique and I had them I had them swap the battery out. Well, no, they had to they had to send it to Japan to swap the battery out. I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine my carbon footprint getting my fucking watch battery changed. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. You know what I'm saying? A plane had to fly my little fucking watch over to Japan. Yeah. And then someone had to drive it there. And someone had to clock in and eat breakfast and then work on it in Japan. <sighs> but no, I would love... Uh, oh, sorry. I'll go. You, you go ahead. You know, I just I, every now and then I'll go and I'll look to see if I can find a Grand Seiko that's exactly like this, with Arabic numerals. It doesn't it doesn't have to be the same color? I'll do a black dial. Oh, that'll be killer. I'll do that all day. I don't know if Arabics are their thing. No, it's not. That's the problem. And I get it. You know, if I want if I want Arabic numerals, I should just I don't know buy a Monte Triumph or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That is a <clears throat> that is a fantastic watch, and I th- I can't remember if the new titanium um, like quartz snowflake that they came out with I I can't mm-hmm. remember if it's the same case as yours, but it smaller. is smaller. Oh, it's even smaller. Oh, because yours it's like is like thirty seven f- or something like that. Mine's forty. Wow, it doesn't feel like forty. No, it's perfect. It's the perfect yeah. watch. You're my you're we're 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 Eskimo wrist bros. We have the same wrist. It's the perfect watch. It like it just sits on there exactly the way it's but uh, the way it's supposed to because a lot of times a 40 without a bezel i'll just put that on and it'll feel like ugh, like not not right or whatever but mm-hmm. <clears throat> something something they did there just just made it feel really really perfect i don't know I, what it is i still have to try to f- see if i can um find one of those quartz snowflakes uh maybe in downtown seattle where they sell grand seiko i can Try one on. Hop you know? back in there again. Um, Try one on. It might. It. I would be interested to hear your experience to see if it to get to to hear if it wears small. Because hmm. thirty seven, if forty feels perfect, would thirty seven be small? You know what I mean? Yeah. I. I don't know. I. I really would like to try one of those on. Um, mm-hmm. I. This reminds me that I. 
uh, <clears throat> I, I placed an order for my first titanium watch. <gasps> what is it? <clears throat> it's you not keep a secret. It's not the snowflake. It'll be a secret oh, now. Okay. For now, okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you after. But um, can you give us a geographical impression? Western hemisphere, Eastern hemisphere. Uh, no Pacific, hemisphere. Pacific Northwest. You give me a very specific area. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, cool. I think that that narrows it down for people in the know. I'm sure. Not not for me. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> That's cool. Hell yeah, I'm excited because you've never owned you've never owned a titanium watch before. No, I uh, I actually got so close to very stupidly buying a Pelagos FXD one day. Right, and I was I was manic to the point of just like I got the money. I'm just gonna go to the mall and get it. I. Uh, st- I still think the original 42 millimeter Pelagos is one of the nicest titanium watches I've ever worn in my entire life. Yeah. But then I kept, I kept on, um, going to the Tudor subreddit and the quality control issues that I'm seeing are becoming more and more and more apparent. And after the two separate (laughs) issues that I had, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not going to take the risk again. So if you, if you already have the odds for some reason weighed against you with Tudor quality control, why inc- increase the op- the the variables for those 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 odds to go up and just get something that already has QC issues as the norm potentially? So yeah, I, it's a little sad, but I'm just going to stay away from the brand for uh, the foreseeable future because it's a it's the same thing that happened. Um, you know, the watches just stop. I don't feel like a freak now because I fell asleep with uh, a BlackBerry 58 and woke up and just wasn't running. Mm-hmm. The um, the 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 Pelagos, those are the Edo movements, right? They're, or or, or they're, they originally had Edo movements, right? Originally, yeah. Those and if Dude, you find just, one of those two liners now with the ETA movement, it's it's kind of tough at this point. And really, Damn yeah, it. they've almost say, gone. Just, I think they've almost gone up in value. Or they they sell for a prettier penny than uh, some of the modern ones. You could keep your eye on David S W. Just keep going, checking out the Tudor area there. That uh, watch that is a fantastic watch. It is a big watch, but because it's titanium, at least for 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 your and my wrist size, it was amazing. That was yeah. a great wearing experience. So I hear you. I'm excited. It's, it's a good wrist, but that's but. But that's yeah, that's 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 my that's my uh, that's my wrist check. I possibly have another watch in the sights, which we'll actually talk about today. It's related to this episode. Okay, I'll, I'll go a little bit into that. But um, do you want to spend a few minutes just giving a, a quick update on just where where we've been, what's going on? Talk about the Spotify SoundCloud issues, uh, uh, yeah. or not the Spotify, just the SoundCloud issues um, that have been happening with the show. Yeah, we can give an update. Uh, <clears throat> on that specifically, so we we had a uh, again very nice people writing in saying, "Hey, looks like I can find uh, only up until episode seventy something of your show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been trying to catch up. I started in episode one. We've we've heard the story. A lot, thank, you. Is, thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you so, so much, much for whoever uh, does that. But I guess some folks got to the the mid seventies or whatever, and they said I can't find the other episodes on on Spotify. So, um. Uh, earlier, uh, just actually or mid-October maybe, uh, late October, uh, SoundCloud and Spotify just had an issue where they uh, they just weren't talking to each other uh, technically mm. in the back end. So that <clears throat> led to some episodes disappearing. Um, on the Spotify end, it should be fixed now. And I think there's still some work to be done on the Apple podcast side. But if okay. you uh, <clears throat> if you ever just want to listen to episodes you can find them all on soundcloud.com slash two broke watch snobs. I think, I don't know if SoundCloud has, um, a nice app to use like on, on mobile or whatever, but you know, it's funny. We've, been on, we've been on SoundCloud since the beginning. Yeah. I don't know very much about SoundCloud. I think, I think when we started, when we started the show, it was kind of this weird, um, where can we publish for the cheapest? <laughs> Yeah, and it's, you know, musicians do put stuff on there, but at the time it was a lot of, like, internet rappers and... A lot of rappers, makers. yeah. Um, <laughs> they, like, they they send bot comments to our, our inbox still. It's like, yo, let's collab. 
I don't think you know what you're doing. Who but, are you? Um, yeah. Yeah, but it should be it should be fixed now, at least between SoundCloud and Spotify. So in re- in regards to this topic, I want to I want to pose two questions out for folks, and I would I would I would love to hear your responses. First question: If there's somewhere more appropriate, we should be publishing the show, or at least hosting the show. The, ho- the, the so you you know the the show, the show will distribute through a lot of different platforms. So Spotify, Apple, um, even YouTube. Go and check it out on YouTube as well if you want to see the video, if you want to see Mike and Mike's faces or whatever. Um, but it's hosted ultimately on SoundCloud. And SoundCloud yeah. is the source of this issue. That's what Mike's talking about. If there's another better option for hosting the audio to distribute, let us know your thoughts. <clears throat> I'm yeah, not super well aware. You know? It's all just an RSS from SoundCloud. And it's yeah. uh, it uh, streams down to all of these other podcast spots which i and like know about. sound cloud analytics kind of suck so i'm not even like necessarily married to like yeah. but like they're like oh, i'm not leaving soundcloud over my dead fat fucking body it's just like <laughs> uh, uh, I, i'm fine going somewhere else like anytime we have to pull analytics from soundcloud i have to do math yeah that's a fucking dangerous thing to ask me to do michael people will die <laughs> okay if i have to do math uh second thing i brought this up before I think we should seriously consider it in light of recent events that have happened on our show. Greater community, do you think Michael and I should post the episodes, our show, to Pornhub? I think it'd be fucking hilarious. I was not expecting that. <laughs> just casually, we talked about this, just casually, just being like, being like, hey guys, two book wash offs, thanks for checking us out on Pornhub. It's like, what's happening? Are any of, one, are any of the two guys going to take their shirts off? What, what's going to happen? It'd be funny I think it'd if be we got it, it, it'd be funny if that would be the move that got us uh serious advertisers for some reason. Who the fuck would ever adver- uh, every every cannabis company? Yeah, maybe I don't know who else would advertise <laughs> with us on Pornhub. Yeah, and then we'd probably break some rules. We would probably have mm-hmm. to do taxes differently or not at all. Um that could be a great it sounds like a great adventure. You're really selling me on this thing, dude. <laughs> This is our descent into like a, 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 a madness. You know what I yeah. mean? I like oh, it. boy. But no, everything should be okay now, I guess it seems like, with the SoundCloud stuff. I think so. I'll, I'll, at least between Spotify and SoundCloud, it, it should be fixed. Um, I'll check cool. Apple Podcasts after this. Yeah. And then, yeah, like I said, there's a different place people think my, if you're also a podcast creator or a content creator of any kind and you're just like, yeah, I love being on blah, 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 just let us know. I mean, it just literally just open to any kind of thoughts or opinions. Um uh sweet should i talk about should i give a really quick update about just the past couple of weeks a couple of weeks fucking eight weeks six seven or eight weeks yeah i think it's i think it's warranted i think people um <clears throat> you know people were wondering about us and you know you yeah. had a lot of crazy weather on your side of the the country yeah yeah, and- yeah super appreciate everyone reaching out and just seeing if i'm okay so i'm located here in the gulf coast of uh florida i'm like in between the sarasota and and and, and bradenton area and so obviously we had hurricane um helene kind of brush through here go up the country and then really devastate um you know parts of the south uh, georgia north carolina especially south carolina i think i impacted too like it, it, it's super sad and then after that we had um milton make more uh direct impact like milton literally made a landfall at siesta key which is like my local beach like here in the 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 the, the bradenton sarasota area so um thanks for everyone that reached out a lot of con- contributed to me being offline was that honestly the storms impacted a lot of things uh but the largest thing actually is um we the last episode we recorded i don't remember what day that was exactly but on that exact day so did, 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 i don't know if i ever told you the full story mike but um that day uh or no it was a day but it was a day or two before that day or two before that my phone rings which first of all is, is terrifying no one calls me text me if you call me i assume you're like like the irs or it's like a like a scam or something like that don't fucking call me yeah you know actually i don't think i don't think the irs is allowed to call you <laughs> i have a bunch of a bunch of accountants yelling at their radios right now we're not allowed to call you <laughs> not accountants, out of this um and so my phone rings is automatically terrifying and to my mom my mom never calls me never calls me and so i see that i'm like fuck the house burned down and my dad's dead. 
I said that to Becky. I'm like, babe, one of those two things is happening. And she's like, and and, and I obviously I missed the call because I was talking to my fucking wife. And so I had to call, to call my mom back. Call my mom back. My dad had a heart attack. He didn't die. My dad had a heart attack uh, on his 75th birthday. During his 75th birthday party, he ended up uh, 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 having a heart attack. And so we had travel plans for just a family vacation, me, my wife, and my son. We canceled those and immediately got into a, a, a car as soon as we were able to figure everything out, like a day or two after that, and then drive down to Fort Lauderdale because he had to go and have a triple bypass surgery. So <clears throat> three wow. blogged arteries, blocked, blocked, clogged, whatever it is, two 99% block and then one like 60% block or something like that. And so... Um, my dad's a really interesting guy. I don't know if this is a generational thing or a cultural thing, but my dad does not tell anyone when anything's wrong. He's just, he's just he's like, oh, I'll, I'll just power through it. I'll just drink another glass of water and I'll feel, <laughs> I'm sure I'll feel bad. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. He, I shouldn't complain. I do the same thing sometimes. And so for months he had been short of breath. Um, he had issues standing up. He'd be getting, he'd been getting dizzy. He having like numbing sensations every now and then. And um, he has like other health issues and he was kind of just shrugging it off and everything like that until obviously, you know, it wasn't an issue. So I was down there uh, for a while, just helping figure everything out. He went through uh, the bypass surgery. He came out uh, fine. Thankfully the surgery went, went, uh, went really, really well. Um, It's so cliche and everyone talks about it. I hear everyone talking about it all the time. And every time I enter a new phase of it, it always impacts me. But it's so emotionally disarming watching your parents age and seeing them weak and cry yeah. at their weakest. Yeah. It, 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 it disarms me every time. You think you think like oh yeah it's fine the old battle axe he's down for the count again but he'll be fine but like no you you, you turn in you you immediately turn to a little kid who has to possibly exist in a world where your parents not there anymore mm-hmm. I don't care if you're 37 like me you're 40 or 50 it's really really it, it it cuts very interestingly and I remember just before I think I told you the story Mike just before they were going to do the anesthesia to like go and get the, the the procedure done. So the particular procedure that he had is the one that he didn't want to do, but it was the one the doctor recommended. And I think it was called, it was called something unfairly benign. It's like the cabbage procedure or something like that. <laughs> I'm not even fucking joking. I think it's, I think it's like an acronym. It's called, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to do the, the cabbage procedure. They, they, they cut through the bone of your chest and then they open you up like a king crab like this. They, they, they spread the bones apart and that's how they get access, you know, to your, to your heart. And so I'm in the room and the doctor's like, like meticulously talking to me, but like that was the day before. So the day after, you know, it was just before my dad was about to go, um, uh, uh, under the anesthesia and he's in pre-op and everything. And, um, my dad's told me this a couple of times. My dad keeps a lot of his personal stuff pretty guarded again. Don't know if it's a generational thing or uh, a, a, a cultural thing, and um, he told me this a couple of times. And he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, he goes. My biggest, he looks at me, he's like, my biggest regret is I never got to tell my mom goodbye before she died. He's like, I want you to say goodbye to me, and I'm like, I'm like, you're don't, you're gonna be fine. The problem is there was a bit of uncertainty because of his age. He has other health complications as well. There was some. Uh, they just, they just, they were just, they were just worried. And my dad was worried, and you know, and he he smoked cigars for fifty years. That's catching up with him. He's diabetic. He's had liver cirrhosis. He's had cancer twice, and like, and now, and now, and now, uh, uh, and now this. And so he's like, he's like, I need you to say goodbye to me. I'm like, I'm not saying. He's like, he's like, say goodbye to me. I'm like, fine. <laughs> goodbye, dad. I'll see you when you wake up. And like, I was trying to act all nonchalant and hard. And I got in my car and I cried my fucking face off. Mm. I'm like, that might've been it. Yeah. That might've been it. <clears throat> and then I went and then we, we, we got a, I told you, I told you that we had a hotel cause I didn't want to stay in my parents' house. Cause then I would just turn into a teenager again. I can't fucking have that. So we, so we stayed in a, uh, 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 my wife and son and I, we stayed in a hotel and it was on Fort Lauderdale beach. And so I cried in the car. I got in the car, I drove to the hotel and I sat in the balcony looking at the ocean, just crying at the ocean. Like Penelope, just waiting for Odysseus. I told you that was the only that was the only 
That yeah. was the only only metaphor I could think of of someone crying in front of the ocean. Although I'm sure the rich tapestry of life is full of people crying in front of the ocean. I just couldn't think of them. Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind. I think someone cried in front of the ocean somewhere in that fucking film. That is the second Jim Carrey non comedy reference of the episode of, of the episode. That was. A I good wonder movie. if I get. It was a good movie. I wonder if I could do three Jim Carrey. <laughs> Might squeeze one in, yeah. <laughs> Non-comedy references, but um, but he's fine, and I stayed behind for a little bit, and then Helene was coming, and I had to get the fuck back home and get the place ready for Helene, and then after that, it was Milton, and so like, next thing I knew, it was Halloween, and things were just getting <laughs> back to normal. <laughs> just yeah. getting back to normal, <laughs> so uh, I don't want to go too much further into it, but just that's that's where we've been, and no, or at least I, that's I always... that's where I've been. You know. I always say it, I've probably said it on the show before, but the thing that freaks me out <clears throat> is realizing that I am now at the age uh, that my parents were when I think of most of my core memories of them, like yeah. mid to late, mid to late thirties. <laughs> yeah. Those are the core memories of my parents. And yeah. now I'm that age. And now they're like a totally different age. They're like the age that my grandpa was. And then the way that I looked at my grandpa when I was that age, it's like that yeah. guy's like a hundred years old. Holy shit! <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> passage of time. Yeah, it's really out. weird. It's freaky because, and this is again, this is so cliche. Everyone's probably just like, "Duh, Kaz." Obviously, it's so gradual. If you literally don't take a moment to stop and think about it, you're gonna miss it. You miss yeah. so much. You miss so much by not just stop, by just stopping and thinking. Like literally, in my mind, I'm as emotionally connected to myself as I was when I left home when I was 18. I remember, mm. I remember leaving home and saying bye to my dad because I turned 18 and, 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 and I fucking left home because fuck that place. I had a weird childhood. And, um, but in my mind, it feels like it was not that long ago, but obviously that was a long fucking time ago. And yeah. so much stuff has happened between those that I, I, I know there's things that I've totally just not really properly absorbed or I've just forgotten because I didn't want to be authentically present in the moment to be aware of the time that was passing. That's why I'm trying to do everything I can with my son. I'm trying I'm trying to make as many memories as we can. I'm trying to get as many to like a neurotic level. I'm trying to get as many like photos of him as I can and and I'm just and and yeah, it's it's really interesting. I had someone at work describe it to me this way. Because uh, I, when, I, when, I, when I went back to work, you know, I was explaining to like, oh, what happened to my dad and everything. And they were just like, huh, you know, we have a term in the marketing world. You're in the squeeze. I'm like, what's the squeeze? Like the squeeze. You're being squeezed between taking care of parents who, you know, aren't well anymore while also trying to take care of kids who you're trying to raise. You know, demographically in terms of a target audience. You're the squeeze audience. I'm like, that's great. I'm really glad I can be thanks bucketed into a, a spreadsheet audience. That's cool, bro. <laughs> you know, so uh, but that's where I've been. But yeah, so thank you for everyone that reached out just to see if we were okay from the storm and just from being um uh not doing the show for so long or anything like that. So um and my dad's okay, he's okay now. He's just he's just annoyed yeah. he can't move as fast as he used to. Um which is fine. There's a there's a there's a fucking hole in his chest, which you know has to heal. <laughs> Dude, they they had to they had to vacuum seal the wound afterwards. It was fascinating. I was just looking at it uh, 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 when he when he uh, when he got out, and like there's a bandage there, and they like vacuum sealed around it, and um, yeah. I just Dude, never huge want to prop- go to the doctor. Yeah, well, I would literally, we we literally are about to say the actual antithetical statements to say, huge props to doctors and modern <laughs> medicine. <laughs> I was literally about to say that when you were like, I don't want to go to the doctors, man. <laughs> huge, huge props, props to you, to, but I don't want to see you. <laughs> huge props to docs, nursing staffs, admin, everyone, fucking valets at the hospital. Like every time I've had to go to a hospital for a major or medical event, every person I've interacted with has been great except one person steve and it was the steve i oh, know not 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 the good steve not the steve we were just talking about uh <laughs> there was um the 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 person in charge of billing at the hospital that that my wife and i were at when my son was born mm. that person was a fuckhead <laughs> super rude super fucking rude 
<sighs> like we're just sitting there trying to learn how to nurse our kid for the first time and she barges into the room like asking for like information and like the it's just here's the bill. so stupid <laughs> what'd you say here's the bill <laughs> Yeah, which is fine. Like, yeah, that's amazing. I'll, I'd love to pay your money. I'm a little busy right now, dude. Oh, man. So, <clears throat> but that's where we've been. Again, thanks for everyone for reaching out. We're all okay. Um, here's to hurricane season being over soon. Yeah. It's been a weird one, dude. It has been a weird one. Um, you know? I also just realized that in less than, in less than two months... Mm-hmm. Y2K would it will be a, a quarter century ago. <laughs> Speaking of the Becky, passage of time. Becky and I were talking about Y2K recently. She was like, she's like, I don't get why everyone was so worried. It's like, it's complicated. It's not complicated, but like you have to be so... People weren't as in touch with just technology back then, but also mm-hmm. at an even more niche level, the concept of like code implications and computer intelligence and there were some things that people just didn't know what was going to happen and so like it was all centered around like dates like if you've seen office space office space did a really good job of explaining mm-hmm. what the what the 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 what, was it office space office space yeah yeah what, what, what the what the whole y2k thing was and like it's so uh, if you're interested go and fucking just watch office space or if you just work in an office watch office space you'll find it wonderfully therapeutic maybe a little Classic. dated it depends Nah, Depends. it still holds up. <laughs> Fucking great. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. Should be all good. Otherwise, nothing else happened. Of import. That's, that's it. Or events. Well, no, yeah. nothing else. I think nope. uh, the squirrel died. That sucks. <laughs> squirrel did. <laughs> that was a big deal. I saw that. Um, that's about it. That's, a, that's oh. about it. <laughs> On November 10th, 2024. Yeah, let's well, talk about cool, the main man. topic. <laughs> that was that was a that was a a beefy beefy update. And thanks for if you're if you're logging on and I don't know if you got a notification somewhere and you're you know you thought to yourself, hey, I'm gonna listen to this show. Thank you for listening. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And yeah. and and I, I I just wanted to take an appropriate amount of time to respect to 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 respectfully explain to people where we slash I have been. Only to match everyone's kindness about just seeing where we were, if we were, and if we were okay. Yep. <clears throat> so, you want to talk about Mickey Mouse watches? It's the perfect segue to Mickey this, Mouse watches. <laughs> this, it actually is. So, so, so the, the this idea of, of 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 Disney in America as an American brand and as a beloved American brand across just multi multi generational from little kids to older adults to to to, to older ass adults the the idea of disney is very very interesting um you know you get you you have you heard the term like disney adult before i have yeah so this this idea of a disney adult it's it's someone that is you know in almost i, I think the caricature or the derogatory way of looking at it is someone that is is in a a negatively clinical way trying to act like a child at Disney. They got the ears on, they wait in line to take pictures with Mickey while there's like other actual children there and stuff like that, you know. Um, but I think there's something to be said about this this idea of Disney as an entity and as a, a, a manufacturer of a brand and a manufacturer of products and, and creating the opportunity for people to find happiness through their brand in whatever way is appropriate to them. I've seen all kinds of different people use Disney as a medium to just find happiness or find escape. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea behind the the original inception of just Disneyland, you know, um, escaping the world of today. You're, 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 and so I, 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 Disney's very near and dear to, 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 to my heart, which is, which is why I'm very excited to talk about this. I know, I know, a. Uh, uh, I know an appropriate amount of stuff in regards to this topic, but there's something I'm curious on, Michael. I think you've never, <laughs> you, you and I, well, yeah, you and I have never talked too much about this. Your your wife likes Disney. She's very much into the 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 uh, the, the, the the Disney idea and the the idea of magic and everything like that as a product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you? So I think we, we've never talked directly about this before. <clears throat> no, we haven't, and and like. 
we were like all of us, we were all kids growing up in South Florida and a trip to Disney World, where I think for a lot of families that don't have that same proximity, a trip to Disney World or probably two was not uncommon every year. Right? Whether it's right. like a summer thing, it's just four hours away. Where some people, even internationally, you could spend like a year planning a visit or or something. You know, it's it's a yep. huge undertaking to get the family out there. So I think it was a um I think it's definitely something I took for granted growing up. Um I th- there are a lot of um you know, a lot of Disney stories and movies and everything that are just near and dear to me from from growing up. Sure. Uh, I, you know, actually like Spanish was technically my first language and mm-hmm. I I learned a lot of English through like Disney movies and reading books oh, and cool. stuff. That makes so, sense. So that that kind of helped me out and it's still a like, huge part of my childhood and there are uh, we talk about I think the same like two or three movies that that always uh resonate with me. It's, you know, Sword in the Stone, yep. uh the Robin Hood animated one. Those those two are just like like my jam. Right. Um, <laughs> the thing is I and of course like going to the parks as a kid was was a huge deal. I was kind of weird though. The park that I was always most excited about was uh at the time was MGM Studios. I don't oh. I don't know why I just I really wanted to go on the ride where like they showed you movie stuff and like explosions or whatever and there used to be a I had a weird another weird obsession as a kid with the movie uh Rocketeer I think the Rocketeer oh yeah Disney movie yeah yeah puts on like the brass metal helmet has a fin he gets the jetpack oh yeah and and one of those one of those rides had this mini sort of museum in the back that you would walk through, and they had the jetpack there. <laughs> and I I saw that one time, and I was just like, the the family would plan the vacation, and um, I'd always be the annoying one, like, are we going to MGM? I want to see that stuff again, you know? Hell yeah! Uh, so the 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 castle and all that stuff, and, and of course, like the the scary roller coasters, the uh, Thunder Mountain, Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain. Disney, Um, Disney scary, Disney scary roller coasters. Yeah, Disney scary. (laughs) So yeah, that that was that was kind of a big, big thing for me, uh, growing up in adulthood. I um, I'm just really on the lookout for, uh, good stories and Mm. you know, good good movies. We were talking about Tangled the other day. I think that one's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I just want to see them now with all of the the momentum that they've built up over the decades to uh to see what they can do now that it's bigger than, than ever before. I don't know if I'm, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm super into Disney today. Um, mm. I, I do appreciate the, that some of the magic still seems to be there. Uh, we talk about hospitality a lot and they they are kind of world-class in, in the way that they do those things. Yeah. Depending on where you go on property. Oh yeah. Yeah. But um, it's it's been. I mean, I think the last the last big bout of excitement I had was when that Star Wars kind of acquisition happened because I'm I was a big Star Wars kid. And oh yeah. I just wanted I wanted to see how that evolved, uh, how Star Wars would evolve with the power of Disney behind it. And I think we got some. I think we got some good stuff. I still think the Mandalorian is pretty sweet. Um. Uh, you know, Disney, the, the the Disney acquisition of the Star Wars IP, $4 billion. It's the boredest I've ever seen, uh, 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 like, 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 um, like George Lucas. Like if you go and Google a photo of, of, you know, like Bob Iger and George Lucas, well, he doesn't hate it. I think he just burned all the money afterwards. I really, I literally, I think he actually just gave it all away. I, the, the, the $4 billion. But so I think the, my impression as someone that's, uh that like you i had a love of the of the 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 star wars you know lore and this this very interesting uh this almost cultural milestone that was created by the star wars franchise i had a very strong relationship with it as well just like you and the idea the disney acquisition was really interesting i think if i could sum up disney's handling of the star wars ip in a most appropriate way it'd be like 
if I had a machine gun and I was trying to like shoot, I don't know, a clementine from a hundred feet away and I shot like 200 bullets and maybe two bullets hit it. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean? There That's, has been more bad Star Wars content. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. good Star Wars content, but at least they're trying. That's that that, that that's the important thing. At least they're yeah. putting stuff out there. And I I'm I'm not as I don't feel as enchanted these days because I think I feel so overwhelmed by how mm. much is by how much is out there. Where it's a lot of it's a whole lot of quantity, and I'm just like I don't know where to start. So I'm going to be indifferent to this at this point. So, um, but you know. My wife is a still a huge fan. She was there, I think, this past summer, actually. Mm. Um, and we still haven't gone to Disneyland, which is kind of funny, living on the West Coast now. Um, we were thinking about doing that for my birthday uh, next year, if oh, you want to come. Yeah, let us know. That, that'd be, that'd that'd be, be pretty cool. Yeah. Right? That would be sick. I'm going to get you to believe in magic. Okay, <laughs> we're we're going on a Disney cruise next year. We're not we're not we're not going to tell anyone when. That's true. That's true. But we we we've we've got the process in motion to get on a Disney cruise. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you to believe in magic. I'm gonna Let's, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it out of you if I have to. Maybe maybe it'll be the watch boutiques on the uh, on the cruise that makes me believe again. <laughs> we are going we are going on the Disney Wish, and the Disney Wish has uh, it's got some watch shopping on there. Get some serious watch shopping so we can go and buy some duty free diamonds or whatever, and I guess some watches or something. <laughs> I don't know. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. But let's. But yeah, I I I I think it's just important for people to understand where Michael and I are are coming from. We're or at least okay. No, I I shouldn't I shouldn't speak for you. I'm coming from this as a Disney lover first, mm. and a watch lover second, because I think a lot of people will try to come at it for as like from a watch aspect. So the 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 remainder of this conversation, I keep moving from the mic. I'm sorry. The remainder of the conversation is probably going to be less watch focused. Like I don't think we're going to talk about balance cocks hey. seriously. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Or like the types of movements or things like that. I think this is yeah. going to be much more discussion about um, licensing, merchandising, creation, American watchmaking as a, 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 a manufacturing entity for American licensing partnerships. And then um, we're going to talk about citizen watches. <laughs> Can I oh, yeah. elegantly transition? Citizen watches is the official provider of watches for all Walt Disney properties and IPs. That's why so you'll have the official one. I thought they were an official one. They changed all the clocks in Disney parks to say citizen. Whoa. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. So it's funny that you say that because I, the, the way that I was um, thinking about this topic going into it was more on the watch side. And it, it led me to think about, of course, the classic Mickey mouse watch where the hands, you know, his yeah. hands are the hands. And I, I got to thinking, is that, is that the first time, a character watch was tried where it was a character and the hands were the hands and you know, how far back oh, does that go? That I don't know actually. And, and then, you know, you, you research the topic and you find uh, some of these, you, you start to find some of these, um, you know, big American names like Ingersoll and, uh, Oh yeah. You know, you, you see Seiko's in, in the past and even larger luxury brands. And I think like, John Mayer has like two custom Mickey Mouse Daytonas and just how, how far does this go? So this is interesting. I, I, in my mind, I focus this conversation on official licensings of the, those, 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 those intellectual properties to brands. So custom, like the, like I'm, I'm, I'm super aware of the custom John Mayer Disney's that doesn't count. I'm talking about licensing production, like, like, like watches to be, uh, to be made there are all kinds of one-off disney things that have been done and everything like that but um that's not necessarily what i'll focus uh what i'll focus on uh i, I talked about this at the beginning of the show the idea of merchandising and licensing some sort of property for other uh businesses to make um was ingrained really really early on not even just with the advent of the parks because when people think about the parks you're like oh i gotta make sure i set aside budget to buy merch the idea of 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 of, of Disney merchandise is way before the parks, and so Disney D Disney merchandising license agreement started in like the 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 nineteen twenties, like nineteen twenty, um, 
yeah, I wrote it down, 1923. And um, that that predates stuff like yeah 1939 the first snow white film first full length animated feature snow white so the idea that this was the thing that really put disney on or or, or, or walt disney and animation on the on the, the 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 map for a lot of people and then obviously it wouldn't be until another couple decades when the when the parks opened but um kind of going back to this idea of of licensing and and, and merchandising for for disney i think walt Disney, one Walter Elias Disney, I think is a really interesting guy. I think people see images of him. He had a very keen understanding of his public image when he did like the iconic, I'm going to walk you through the experimental city of tomorrow like thing. And everyone's seen him at the models with the sticks and point. He had a very cultivated view of who he was, this sort of um, genial, almost a uh, father or grandfather like figure who had a bit of a spark of like kid like imagination. But I think the reality is he also had very large issues of feeling, I don't know if inadequate is the word, but he always compared himself to a lot of other large Hollywood filmmakers and producers and these people and things like that. And so he was always trying to figure out how, um, even in some senses, monetarily, how to be on the same level as these folks. And so you could, you can sort of see where I'm going with this. He was always trying to figure out how to make as much money as he possibly could from Mickey Mouse, Disney Ventures, Walt, the, 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 the Disneyland parks. He and his brother Roy actually got into a really, really big fight because he wanted to sell the rights to use his name to the Walt Disney corporation and he wanted like an obscene amount of money and like they got into a fight over it i think i can't remember the exact amount of money um i'll actually plug this but there's a book called disney war by an author james b stewart it actually catalogs the 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 rise and somewhat pre-fall of the very controversial michael eisner figure who served as ceo and president of walt disney from i think the mid 80s to um about the early 2000s i think it was it was 10 good years and then 10 weird years. Um, and so uh, uh, it's called Disney War. It's one word. Uh, James B. Stewart talks a lot about this in his, in his book. And so, you know, Walt Disney just always had this idea of just wanting to figure out what to do more of to feel adequate enough. When I think his public persona was more pushing what to do more of to push the bounds of imagination or technology, which I'm sure was definitely in there. But the guy wanted to make money. Who doesn't yeah. like money? Plus, this is this is American industry. This is American industry at a time where this is the 20s and this is the 30s and then obviously 40s and 50s. So there was a time of like great economic hardship and we're getting sort of closer into this idea of really more of an economic boom and everything like that. So um, Disney began to very, very aggressively sell licensing rights for people to make like fucking like dinner plates and and like, you know, all kinds of stupid household goods with the fucking like Mickey Mouse head on it and shit like that. And so like, yeah. that's nothing new. No, you know, no one should be like, oh God, now they make Mickey Mouse salt shakers. Yeah, asshole. That's not new. That's not new. There's been Mickey Mouse shit forever. That's bro. a good point. <clears throat> Cause I'd you know? probably see that and think like uh to criticize, like oh, it's just so so much uh like over merchandising to a point where it's not just, new. Yeah. That's not a good new. that's a good point. Um, Michael Eisner has, oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Michael Eisner. If you're, if you're a, a somewhat millennial like Michael and I, and you enjoyed any swath of Disney films that you consider part of your core childhood, I don't care how you feel about Michael Eisner as a figure. You have him to thank for that. Hmm. Lion King, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, fucking Animal Kingdom for talking parks as well. Sorry. A lot of people don't like Michael Eisner. I like Michael Eisner. He's a little crazy, which I think is perfect. But um, <laughs> Michael Eisner has a really interesting quote. He was being interviewed and he's like, you know, companies like Coke have a product. Companies like, you know, um, uh, I don't know what kind. I can't think of a company that makes like one thing um, or at least a handful of things. Companies like Apple. I'll just make this. Um, he, he didn't say Apple. I'm saying Apple. Companies like Apple, for example, only make a handful of products. Disney makes thousands and thousands and thousands of products across so many different verticals and so many different industry trends and non-trends that the idea of trying to keep a company like this profitable across all of these different ventures is insane. It's always going to be waves. You know, one year, maybe the video game segment will do good. The next year, maybe it's going to be the, the, uh, the, the, the animation segment that does good. Um, 
and so the the it's just interesting when you think about it the idea of i'll say i'll i'll say it over merchandising is very much in the dna of disney mm. not new you show me a disney toilet seat cover i'll probably buy it i'll fucking <laughs> buy it red fuzzy uh, toilet seat cover with mickey just smiling i'll fucking buy it i don't care <laughs> that's great why wouldn't i want happiness it might be I'm about there. to go in the toilet it's probably it out there i'm it sure it's out there, there. Donald Duck toilet brush? Yes, please. That's like the perfect thing to put Donald on. Poor guy. Poor I'm Duck. Gonna fi- I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find Disney Fab Five advertised bathroom products. Yep. It's I'm going to do it. It's there for it? sure. It's got to be. I found a Finding Nemo one too for the toilet finding seat Finding Nemo cover. toilet seat. That's actually really funny. That's actually, that's actually pretty funny. That is in the deep blue sea. So okay, let's go back to watches. To go back to so so, I just I just wanted to I just wanted to 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 put a lot of that information out there for folks to have reference for as we talk about you know making watches. So, 1923 merchandising mer- merchandising began happening with with Disney products. It wasn't until 1933, or I think 1932, when it actually began for um for 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 watches. So the first Mickey Mouse watch ever produced, and Michael you referenced this, was actually produced by um, Ingersoll. Ingersoll is a really interesting American watch brand that I think a lot of folks have probably heard the name of, but they don't know too much about or anything like that. Ingersoll is very much ingrained with the idea of American watchmaking, just because Ingersoll essentially has a very close tie of not a really direct tie with Timex. Uh, Ingersoll was acquired by Waterbury Watch Company. um, And then eventually Waterbury Watch Company became, I think in the 50s or 60s, became uh, Timex. And uh, yeah, here's, 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 here's one of them now. That's great. The small seconds is like, that's fucking great. I I didn't notice the small seconds when I first saw this. That's really cool. That's really cool. You got the moving pictures, man. He's got the... (laughs) It's really fun. I love. I. 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 I think. I think it's a ton of fun. So the. 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 the and, and. And. And Ingersoll made Disney watches. That was a. That was a license agreement that lasted. Um. For thirty or forty years, uh, it wasn't until I think it was about the sixties or seventies. It was. It was the seventies. So in the seventies, obviously in the watch world, the seventies was an interesting time. It was the advent of you know, uh, the the court crisis and everything Courts. like that so um late 60s early 70s timex no longer begins or timex slash ingersoll is no longer making uh the the the, the mickey mouse watch and it's not just mickey mouse it's also like all, all is they, they call them the fab five so it's 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 what we call them the fab five now it's goofy donald mickey uh uh, uh pluto and um oh, i gotta count my fucking hands <sighs> mickey goofy donald pluto mini Okay. All right. Fab five. Fab six if you want to count Daisy. So Daisy. Um that's Donald's like female Who counterpart. Needs Daisy. <laughs> I think Daisy's cool, man. I don't know. Um my kid loves my kid loves Daisy. We were at character dining last time we were at Disney and, and she was there and it was like it was he he lit he lit he lit the most up for her. It was really funny actually. Nice. Uh, <laughs> he also loves ducks. So he's just pointing at her and yelling duck. <laughs> duck. <laughs> duck. <laughs> Um, court crisis happens 1960s, 1970s. What I'm a little unclear of is whether, uh, at a certain point in time, I know Timex, I think, had to file for bankruptcy, and I don't know if Timex could no longer produce Mickey watches or if Disney removed the licensing rights from them because then the licensing rights to make uh, uh, Disney watches slash the Mickey Mouse watch went to uh, an entity called the uh, Bradley Watch Corporation, which is essentially a, 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 a wing of Elgin Watches. Um, oh, okay. Elgin Watches. Uh, everyone knows. Everyone knows Elgin Watches in regards to also um, American watch history. Pocket watches, I think, is like the big thing with Elgin and everything like that. Uh, that wasn't for as long. That was for um, maybe fifteen years. I think I'm trying. To, I I didn't take very good notes. I think it was about 15 years. So it was early 70s to like 87 or 86 uh, is how long Elgin Watches was doing. And then that's where it gets interesting. It went from Elgin Watches to a company called Loris Watches, L-O-R-U-S, which is also essentially Seiko. So there's a period of time where um, Seiko had 
uh, the the like main license agreements to make you know the Disney watch. And so I want to caveat: there were other companies, I believe, making Disney watches. Like the license agreements, I think, were extended to different watch companies. But I'm pretty sure these were like the quote unquote official ones. So oh, yeah, I'm um, sure there were, <clears throat> I'm sure there were plenty of people making unlicensed ones as well. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, so if you go and you're just like, uh, Kaz, I found, uh, uh, I found the, 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 the Vostok Mickey watch. You missed a Vostok on your list. I'm like, listen, is there that's one? A, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's, oh a, there's, a, there's a, yeah, Google it. There's a Vostok <laughs> Mickey Mouse watch. I don't think that was licensed. If that was licensed, someone tell me because that was also probably in the late 80s when they started to, when the Soviet Union started to try to maybe adopt a little more Western practices than maybe some of the early, you know, kind of originating 1917 forefathers would have liked for them to do. But that was an attempt for them to try to um, be a little more modern, but it was obviously, you know, too late. If you're a metalhead at all, this is also, I think, around the same time, late 80s, early 90s, when uh, they had that metal concert in Moscow with like Pantera and Metallica and like they had like other musicians there and stuff like that. So uh, it's entirely possible for some reason Disney was like, yeah, Vostok, you can do a Mickey Mouse watch. Um, oh so if that's God, the case, think- let me know. But I don't, I'm I'm going to go on a limb and say it, it wasn't uh, It wasn't the case. Michael, you have trouble finding on, it? I think I found one on eBay. That's it. I think oh there's also God. a Donald Duck one as well. But yeah, that's the Vostok B. This looks like a uh, this looks like a bezelless four two zero case. The fuck is this thing? Oh, the crown's in a weird spot. The crown's at two. I was about to it's ask almost, you about that because I've never seen a case like that. With the crown. Uh, some of the commander skis are like that. Some of the commander skis have the crown at two. The Vostok Cadet might have it at two, but I think it has it at four. Wow, this is cool. pretty pricey. Two ninety. What the f- what the what the <laughs> fuck happened to Soviet watches, dude? You did. It used to be. No, I refuse to believe that. I, <laughs> we are not that influential. It used to be back in my day. I would be cleaning my laundry pockets out, and I'd find twenty dollars in my jeans. I'm like, you know what? I'll go buy a Raketa. I'll go buy no, a Raketa with this money I found in my jeans. Not guitars anymore. too, man. I was just talking to a friend. The guitars are the same way. It's crazy. <laughs> what the hell, man? So okay, so so 1987, Loris watches gets the 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 rights to uh, make the Disney watch, and then after that, um, I think it gets interesting. After that, you clearly have a lot of entities making Disney watches. I think in the 90s, Timex was making Disney watches again. You have you have had Swatch making uh, Disney watches and 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 everything like that. Um, obviously, a lot of the, the the fossil brands, because what's inevitably ended up happening is Disney in an effort to try and always maximize whatever it can from merchandising, not just to, okay, so I have a very, I have a very cynical view on this, not just to maximize shareholder profit and revenues and everything like that. Also, if you're a Disney shareholder and you know, you're, you're, well, that's kind of complicated in the past five years, but if you're a Disney shareholder and you did that because the Disney stock looked prospective to you, you should also thank Michael Eisner. I just want to put that mm. out there. Fucking God. Um, Got to learn about this guy now. <laughs> I think he's he's clearly crazy. He's certainly very eccentric. Um, we can talk a little bit about we can talk a little bit about that. I, 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 I'll, I'll go into that. Well, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit now, actually. So the whole dynamic that I think what makes Disney successful and what we're missing now, and why I'm very fucking excited for Bob Iger to retire, like he said he was going to. This time, because he, he tried that once and that didn't work, um, I'm very excited for Bob Iyer to to step down and for someone new to come in place because Disney is most successful when you have this dichotomy of wallet and imagination. You need a money person and you need like a magic imagination person. And that goes to the the the, the impetus of what made the Disney parks properties really amazing and the films, obviously. Uh, you know, Roy, Walt's brother, was a money guy. He was a finance guy. He was, a, you know, a finance officer, all that fun stuff. Uh, Walt was not. Mm. Like he, 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 uh, he would make huge financial decisions when like Roy was on vacation because he knew Roy would say no. You know what I mean? Like, like it was always a fight. 
Um, I think he wanted to use real gold in the Disney parks, like on the West Coast Disney parks on like buildings and things. And I think for the most part, they didn't. But I think they made this joke actually in Saving Mr. Banks. I think he waited for Roy to be out of town to use gold on like the castle or something like that. So he couldn't say no. You know what I mean? So like this, the fight, the fight was always there between the two of them. And you didn't really have anyone. There weren't that many CEOs or presidents after, after Walt, um, it was like Don Tatum and then it was Card Walker and then it was uh, poor, poor Roy Miller. And then, uh, and then no one really captured that magic until it was Michael Eisner and Frank Wells. Frank Wells, uh, I think I worked at Disney for a little bit before that. I think he was technically like the president or something. I'm fucking that up, but he worked at Disney before that, but he was, a, he was a finance guy. And then, and then, and then in comes Michael Eisner, who's a, he's a, he's a TV movie guy. He was a, he was a, 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 a like old TV, like Laverne and Shirley kind of stuff. Like he was like 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 a like a TV movie guy, but he was a big ideas guy. And so the dichotomy of Michael Eisner and Frank Wells produced like really iconic things. Then Frank Wells died, and then uh, Michael Eisner was just a crazy person by himself. Admittedly, you know, for the last the last part of his time at Disney, and then that's when shit got weird. Um, that's when you had movies which maybe weren't as big hits as some of the earlier period, but I think still have a cult following. So like Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hercules, those all came in like Eisner's Eisner's crazy period. Yeah, uh, I still love those too. Those are yeah, <clears throat> man. I watched Hunchback <clears throat> like like a lunatic when I was a kid. I don't know. This I just is, liked still it. fun. Um, again, not having Frank Wells, you know, I think cost a lot of. We're getting really off the rails, but like, um, I think originally, <laughs> yeah, I guess it is our show. Michael Eisner could have bought Pixar from. I think it was for like seven hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. I think they had the option of buying it oh for that gosh. much, uh, and he didn't because he thought it was dumb. He didn't like so. Okay, Michael Eisner was amazingly cheap. He wanted to do as much as he could for as little fucking money as possible, and he had this idea of like, hey, you know, we're Imagineers, we're Disney, we can do anything ourselves here. I shouldn't have to pay money to buy something, which yeah. is totally the fucking opposite of Bob Iger, who paid. Was it seventy billion dollars for Fox? How much? How much did how much did Bob Iger buy Fox for? Uh, let's see. Seventy one point three billion dollars in yeah. two thousand nineteen. Fuck. Then he bought Star Wars for four billion, and then um, I think Marvel. What was Marvel? Seven billion. Chump change. I mean, I guess. <laughs> uh, let me see here, Bob Iger. Uh, I can't find it. But 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 all that's to say, um, Eisner was was amazingly cheap, and so he could have bought Pixar for like two hundred thousand bucks because the people that started it worked, I think, at Disney originally. Because the whole thing that made Pixar interesting was computer animation. Eisner was very against the idea of computer animation. Well, no, he was for it, but just he didn't want to pay for it. Hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's complicated. But um sorry, we're getting way off fucking watches. I'm so sorry right now. The uh Can you hear my what son? Is that? That's oh, my okay. child. Oh. Guys, are you safe? Are you do you need, he's he's sick right now, so doesn't sound I was happy. telling you about that. No, I probably woke him up with the ramblings and shamblings of a crazy man in the room next door. <laughs> That's fine. But, um, so Seiko, I think was the last like big soul, uh, uh, licensor of like Disney watches. Now many people make Disney watches and we've sort of returned full circle to this idea of like a main Disney watch provider. And it, it is citizen watches, which I think is, is actually really smart. 2018. Um, that was right. Uh, I was still in Orlando. So this must have been, yeah, 2018. Yeah. Oof, different world back then. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are crazy looking. Like you're... They're really cool. I think, I think a lot of them are fun. So, the, so, I mean, Citizen Watches is a Japanese watch brand. Everyone knows Citizen. If you don't, it's really, really cool. It's an iconic, um, supposed to be this idea of everyone should be able to afford a watch that's highly functional, highly personalized, or at least not pearl, uh, highly tailored to your personal style and then um, uh, environmentally friendly. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is the one I was just, I was showing Mike uh, before we started hitting record. 
uh this is very much in the the this is this is this is mickey on the moon fuck yeah you and know? it's not just it's not just the Mickey stuff that you've seen them make. They've they've been making uh some of the comic book um yeah, you characters see, and all that. You'll see Marvel, you see Marvel watches, um, you know, uh and like oh, also Star like, Wars. Yeah, Star, Star Wars. Wars. Well, I think I mm, Nixon was making Star Wars watches for a bit. I don't know if they still are. Oh, okay. Let me see. No, you're I, I think Citizen is I think Citizen is doing it solely now or they're doing it in tandem with those uh, Nixon watches that came out. No, so of course, Citizen. Um, the Citizen had the 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 uh, the Annie Digis oh, with Star those Wars I, motifs. Those I do like, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Citizen's doing really, really good things, and so I think this idea of you know Disney being a brand that like everyone can find happiness in, that's kind of for everyone. It makes so much sense that. That that citizen would be the person that's making not the person the entity that's making. Well, I mean, it could be a person depending on who you ask. The entity that's making, um, you know, Disney watches. I think this is really cool. How fun is this? I, I actually do like this R two D two one quite a bit. This is really that's, cool. That's pretty awesome. You know, and so I um, you know, do, do, can, can I show you the watch I'm seriously thinking about getting? Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Can, oh yeah, let me let me borrow the let me, oh, let me borrow the screen share. That sounded um, like a work call just now. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, everyone <laughs> at home. Everyone, everyone at just like, oh, but I'm wearing pajamas. <laughs> Which we all do. Camera down. Uh, let me... Let me find it. If my, son's, if my son's wailing is distracting, just let me know. No, it's okay. <laughs> I, think, I think the noise gate will probably get it. Let me show you this badass watch, dude. If you were impressed by the spinning hand on that last one we were looking at, dude. All right, here it is. Here it is, bruh. Here it is. Screen. Entire screen. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah. This is the Mickey Aviator. It retails for $375 on the Citizen website. It is currently on sale for $281.25, but it is Mickey in a little aviator plane. Look at the small seconds hands. It's oh, the plane wow. propeller. Come on. That's now. cute. And he's blowing the nine and the seven out of the way as he's blasting into the dial. Come on now. I like that. And that's, again, you this know, is when, so fun. When I was thinking about the topic, I guess I was, I was looking at it more from like specific watch models, trying to think how many versions of that character, Mickey Hands, watches, watch, you know, are out there. But this is a totally different take on a Mickey watch that I just, I probably would have never thought about. Um, I mean, the iconic one that everyone wants is the moving hands Mickey. That's like, yeah. you know, I, I, uh, so Bob Iger, current the uh, president and CEO and board member of Disney, is a watch guy. It's actually a really funny story. Um, I'm so sorry I'm talking so much about Disney. Uh, uh, uh the only reason. My take on this is very cynical. I'm going to caveat that now. Uh, uh, the only reason that Bob Iger is current president and CEO of Disney is that when is that he was at ABC when um, when Disney bought uh, 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 ABC. I think he was like the president of the the ABC network. And when 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 shit went down, when Michael Eisner was you know uh, ousted and everything like that, Bob Iger was essentially the the only functioning grown up left in the room. And so he just kinda he just kinda got he just kinda got put in charge. It's a very cynical take. That's not to downplay anything that 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 you know Bob Iger has done. I think he's I think he's purchased some amazing IPs and intellectual acquisitions. He just doesn't really have a strategic direction to utilize those to the best capacity. Mm. Um well well er, 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 early on Michael Eisner was obsessed with this idea of people liking or not liking him and he could flip-flop one day like one day like like i i I wouldn't be surprised if he had like i don't know lead poisoning or something like that because it's like one day he'd be obsessed if someone liked him and the next day he'd be like you know what let's fucking fire him can i fire him get disney legal in here 
let me see if I can fire him right now. Like in like <laughs> crazy people stuff, you know? Um, and there's a period of time where he really wanted Bob Iger to like him. Bob Iger's a watch guy. And he mm. knew that. Uh, Bob Iger's been seen photographed with like a Batman before. And he has a collection of other watches. He also, I think very famously has an early, early Ingersoll Mickey, uh, Mickey Mouse watch. I mean, he might even have his fucking Bob Iger. He might even have like a 1933 one. I have no idea. But there's a period of time where uh, 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 Michael Eisner was trying to figure out how to get Bob Iger to, to like him. And so they want to get him a gift. And someone in his team knew he liked watches. And so they're like, they're like, okay, let's go and get him a really nice Swiss watch. Remember, this is a room of not watch guys. Okay. But not watch guys with money. You know? So the, I <laughs> the think best kind I can't, of watch guy. Be- <laughs> I can't remember the watch. Uh, they got him a brigade. They got him like some random, <laughs> right? They got him some random brigade, and the 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 the, the, the James B. Stewart book Disney Wars like has a has a pretty interesting interesting segment on 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 this part here. And they give the watch to Bob, and uh, I should specify because there's lots of Bobs in Disney to Bob Iger, and um, it's one of those like, oh, thanks, this is great. Yeah, I I saw this the other day. At Macy's, thing. I mean, not you're not gonna find Brigade at Macy's, but like he was clearly very underwhelmed. That's um, in the book, you said. Yeah, it's in the book. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they they. I can't remember the exact model. It's like a Brigade something. I don't know. I'm not too well versed on Brigade models, apparently. But um, I don't casually shop for them either. Don't worry. No, do you not? Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't sure. But yeah, this. I think I'm gonna get this. Forty millimeters, twenty two millimeter lug width. I like that strap also with the Yeah, uh, the I, I literally I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything about this. Eco drive, you got the railroad track. This thing is cool, man. I dig I it. I like it. Just you for know? fun, I went on eBay <clears throat> and I typed in Mickey Mouse watch and I sorted price highest to lowest. Okay. And and you see a lot of um you see a lot of Gerald Genta and Bulgari, which is pretty You know, I think that's interesting. I I think um, Teddy Baldassar has a has a piece talking about Mickey watches, and I think of all the things I used to do uh, research. And I'll I'll actually shout out other websites that I used uh, to do research. That I I I, sh- I should have done that earlier. I apologize. Um, his site was the only site I saw talking a lot about that, like Gerald Genta. Um, what was the other brand you mentioned? Uh, Bulgari. Bulgari. I, Bulgari. I think that's why I really like the idea of Disney working with citizen to make watches on like an official capacity because not everyone's walking around buying fucking bulgaris and like gerald genta like the like the gerald genta brand like watches and things like that like i think there's interesting collaborations that are in there look at this thing which one is the oh this is, this is the swatch one yeah, yeah yeah this is one of the 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 swatch ones it's interesting not my style why is it ten thousand dollars was this like super limited or something why the fuck is it ten thousand dollars? Is it is it is it full of gold? I don't know. Must be limited. I have no idea. I also yeah, don't know some, who this collaborator that Swatch worked crazy, with. Crazy, crazy models out there. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't. I think it's antithetical to the idea of loving Disney and this idea of magic and imagination and whimsy being for everyone. I think it's. I think it's against that idea of seeking out expensive Disney watches. Like, I don't know. I also have a, I also have a very, like, very specific and personal vision of like what the idea of like the Disney product is if you're talking about magic being as a Disney product. But like, I, I think that's just, that's why I, I'm, I'm really into the idea of the, the, the citizen like brand licensing collaboration right now with, um, uh, with the Disney watches. So, um, You've been on some of the cruises or you've been on a lot of the cruises uh, where you say mm-hmm. they sell, they sell watches and you, you mentioned these big names and boutiques and stuff on board. Oh yeah. Like, do they have like a separate boutique where it's Disney specific and then you'll see all these citizens, for example? What do you mean Disney? Spe- like, like, you mean like, like, I guess more specific to, uh, you know, the brand that is, that has the licensing currently where you would find then all of these more affordable you know, Disney theme they, or Mickey Mouse watches. It, dep- it depends on the ship. So 
let's work sort of backwards. The 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 the, the newest ship that's out right now is as uh it's the Disney Wish. I think it came out in 2018, 2019, I can't remember. Um the Disney Wish has a very clear division between luxury watches and like the everyday shit. And the mm-hmm. everyday shit is where the Disney stuff is. Like the luxury watches, you can buy, you can buy Hublot, you can buy Panerai, you can buy Tudors on on the Wish. I'm sure I'm fucking forgetting some. Um, I don't know if they have that through like a collaboration through like Diamonds International or whatever the hell it is, but like it's treated as its own separate AD. Whereas if I walked into the general merchandise store, that's probably where you're going to see like the Citizen Disney watches and 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 stuff like that. Um, Working back from that, the dream and the fantasy, uh, I forgot what year they came out, sorry. Um, those are the, the fantasy was my first Disney cruise ever. And I, I, I love that ship. That that was the first, that was where I, I damaged my my Seiko Sumo. Oh, that was the gosh. first place I ever got damaged on that watch. I hit it on the dividing wall between Frozone's treats and the adult pool as I a was rugged, walking. A rugged story for a rugged watch. Yeah, man. You <laughs> lost a lot of good men on that cruise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh it's a little more mixed in the disney fantasy it's one big store where uh it's it's one long case unless they've changed it. i haven't been on the ship in a while it's one long case and so one end of the case if i remember correctly it's like tag and uh like that kind of stuff and as you work your way down then you get into like you know citizen and and that kind of stuff uh Oh no, I remember. The Disney Fantasy has a has that long case that I'm talking about. As you walk along the wall of the store, this is all in the same building. They tried to create a partition that separated the nice luxury watches from like the everyday watches. Mm. And once you cross that partition, then you have um actually we actually have a piece on the site. Um if you Google Disney Fantasy watches, you'll probably just find it. Uh, when I was there, they had like Breitling and they had, um, I think they had like Omega, uh, and probably Tudor and, and stuff like that. So in, 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 on the Disney fantasy, it's, uh, it's very much, uh, like combined. I forgot that. I totally forgot that you did this. Same. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> two two fucking idiots trying to figure out what it was like watch shopping at the Disney Fantasy when one of them literally wrote a piece about it. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a yeah, video. I, didn't, I even I, took a I video. Didn't. Oh my gosh. We are <laughs> we are we, proper website people. We're, we're, we're watch journalists or something. I don't know. Uh, I took some photos in here. It was really funny. Um, the Disney Magic, I haven't been on the Disney Wonder, but the Disney Magic and the Disney Wonder are, are the, the, the first ships. They're sister ships. Technically, the Disney Magic is the first first ship. I believe it was a combination of the, of the two experiences that I was talking about. There's a shared room where you have stuff, and then, no, you know what it was? It's one big shared room with everything, and I'm remembering why I'm confused. There's, when I was, the last time I was in the Disney Magic, I believe it was the Magic, there was a a Bulgari boutique in there and they had like Octo Finissimos and stuff like that. That was either on the magic or it might've been the fantasy. I can't remember, mm-hmm. but, um, but they're, but it's a very long way of answering your question. They generally are separated or they try to separate them because okay. like they don't, they don't <laughs> want, they don't want just like a watch Normalo to be like, be like, Oh, look at these, these Disney watches. Like, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, hundred bucks, 200 bucks, $10,000 for a, a Breitling doodad or whatever the fuck. I have no idea. You know, I don't, I don't know how, how uh, yes, the doodads talk. Yeah. Yeah. The doodad, the fucking a rare, the, a rare mile. Yeah. <laughs> the super ocean doodad. Yeah. Everyone knows. <laughs> Everyone knows the super ocean doodad, obviously. Um, so no, they they try to separate them. When we're on when we're on the ship, you'll um yeah you'll you'll see. I'm going on the I'm going on the wish in January, so I'll get a bit of a preview. And then I'm going on the magic in May. And then you and I, I'm not telling everyone when we're going on on the on the wish. You and I are going on the wish after that. We can't uh, curse that trip. By the no. way. No, if I'm you're if you're a TBWS lore subscriber, you yeah. understand. I'm getting flashbacks. Oh, we can't now. curse this trip. Yeah, let's just not talk about it anymore. 
That's it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't <laughs> want to jinx it. But um, but that, but 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 that's where we are. I think I think if you're at all interested in getting a Disney watch, either for a love of Disney or a love of watches, and this is this is this is again, this is my personal view. I would really encourage you to not come at it from a collector's standpoint. Don't try to find the rarest blah 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 or the one year where mickey's gloves were 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 white instead of instead of yellow or as mismatched, Bob, I'm, I'm vice versa mismatched gloves you know what i mean yeah like <laughs> like where he had whiskers on one dial and one dial he didn't have whiskers like just i would just i would literally just go to the citizen website and just look for a watch you like there's a ton there's so many fun watches i would get a disney watch out of a love of disney rather mm. than wanting to 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 crush the noobs and get like a super rare Mickey Mouse watch or whatever. Yeah, Unless you it, want to get the Vostok Mickey Mouse watch. Yeah. If it were me, I, I think I'd probably try again to, cause it seems like the creativity that you see on the citizen side now is almost like the same thing that I wanted after the star Wars uh, acquisition. Like I want to see, mm. I want to see the power and how that power can push creativity, um, you know, in a positive way with with the movies and the products or whatever. Um, it's it seems like after seeing that Citizen Mickey Aviator one, like that's that's the kind of really fun, subtle creativity that I'd like to see if I were purchasing, uh, you know, some kind of Mickey Mouse watch or or like the yeah. Star Wars ones where it's not an explicitly an explicit Disney watch, you know, it just has those kind of subtle character design traits. You know what I loved about the, the R2 one, the R2 any, any digi you had on the screen that doesn't necessarily look like to your point, like, uh, 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 any digi cosplaying as R2 D2. Yeah. That it looks more like a watch that might exist in the star Wars universe. You know what yeah. I mean? It's really, yeah, cool. it looks like a, it looks like a vintage, uh, you know, citizen Annie Digi that might've been yeah. lost to history or something. Cause it has cool colors. It's, um, I'll talk a little bit more about Disney and then I promise I'll let everyone go, but it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I don't know if it's because citizen is a Japanese brand or what, but the, the, uh, and I don't, I don't mean to, to, to monolithically homogenize this idea of one, what people do or don't like, but I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just homogenize and, an entire group of people. The Japanese have a great love of Disney and respect for Disney. I mean, when uh, uh, when Tokyo Disney was coming out, there were... If you're a Disney Plus subscriber... Fuck, I'm just sorry. I just tried giving the microphone a blowjob with my chin. If you're a Disney Plus subscriber, I would, I would absolutely encourage you to watch the Imagineering story. It's six or seven episodes talking about the history of Disney Imagineering and it's, it's, it's expansion uh, and the expansion of Disney properties s- sort of around the world. There's a good amount of time spent on, on, um, on, on Tokyo Disneyland and like Tokyo sea and all that kind of stuff. But there's, there's an amazing reverence and love for Disney in Japan. And one of the, uh, uh, <clears throat> one of the, 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 the Tokyo Disney Imagineers, uh, said it really really well historically japanese culture has been very reserved and there was a sense for a long time of not having these large outbursts of happiness or emotion that apparently doesn't count at tokyo disney you can have these large exuberant displays of happiness you can be a grown-ass adult and want to go and hug uh donald duck like you can be super happy and stuff like that so there's actually a really really touching segment when they're talking about that um in light of like the lockdowns like the covid lockdowns and how oh. you know as they were opening up like there was this sense of relief that people can finally go back to tokyo disney and and and, and, and tokyo sea and just uh it speaks to the heart and ethos of what to me again you know makes the disney park special you can find your own spark of escape and childlike whimsy uh on on disney property you don't have to worry about your job or paying your mortgage uh, unless your dad i should caveat all of this unless your dad walking around your family <laughs> then yeah, you have a, base, a, a baseline panic as you're spending you have a baseline money. yeah you're just like you're just like wait mickey premium bars are how much now holy fuck <laughs> back in my day they were 375 now i think they're 670 6, 650 675 can't remember how much they are 
I think the happiest at Disney I've been recently, uh, and I guess this this comes with with aging in general. Mm-hmm. Taking a nap in Carousel of Progress. <laughs> That's, That's when just, most people are happy at Disney. Taking a nap there. <laughs> It's not, it's not, it, 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 people talk about it on the internet as if it's like some big hacker secret. It's not a hacker secret. Everyone knows about it. The Carousel yep. Progress is one of the absolute best rides to get air conditioning and like a 15 to 20 minute nap. Yep. Straight up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, um, over in Tomorrowland, there's barely ever a line. Just go, just go and just, just go and sit, man. Just go and sit and chill. You know? It's nice. nice. Ride it's hasn't changed nice. for the most part, I think. They've done some updates, I think, every now and then. But, you know, for the most part, I think if they ever tried getting rid of or changing that ride. Um, People will riot. I mean, they got rid of, <laughs> of uh, a great movie ride for 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 the for Mickey's Runaway Railway or whatever it was. Um, people kind of were super upset about that. They rethemed Splash Mountain for Tiana's big... Bayou Adventure, whatever it's called. No one had a problem with that. That went mm. fine. Mm. I don't think anyone had any issues with that. Mm. I think it's fine. I think I, 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 you know, it's really funny actually. I'll, um, I promise I'll, I'll stop talking about Disney. Uh, one of the weirdest periods of, of, of time for Disney leadership was obviously probably, you know, COVID. Uh, just before COVID hit, I was gonna okay. I was I was gonna spread tinfoil. I had theory stuff, but I'll do that offline. Uh, yes. Just before COVID hit, um, what'd you say? Yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome back to Infowars with Kaz and Mike. Uh, just before <laughs> COVID hit, um, Bob Iger uh, uh, retired. He resigned as CEO, and he and he 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 appointed at the time. I think he was VP of merchandising or product or something like that. Uh, another Bob, Bob Chapek. And Bob Chapek was probably one of the worst things to happen to Disney during the pandemic. Bob Chapek was anti-paying humans to do anything. If he could automate it, if he could do it with just, you know, a string tied to a flashlight with a fan, he would have fucking done it. And uh, a lot of people got furloughed, a lot of a lot of contractors which is a large majority of 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 of, of human Disney entertainment um, were were fired and everything like that, and then um, uh, they had to bring back uh, Bob Iger. Bob Iger came back, I think, in twenty twenty two. What was it? Yeah, twenty twenty two. Bob Iger came back, and he's there, uh, 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 and 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 he's there now, and so. I'm just very excited to see what happens. And Iger said that this is this or next year is his last year uh mm-hmm. doing what he's doing um at Disney. So I'm excited to see who 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 gets appointed after him. So yeah, help me help me find that magic again. We'll see. <laughs> it's uh it's um it's already it's already in you, man. You just gotta <laughs> find something to help you see that. You know? Yeah, there's uh there's an Alan Watts quote this might be the only podcast that talks about Disney and Alan Watts, but there's an Alan Watts quote where it said this idea, and I'm paraphrasing, of of recovery and self-discovery has to essentially function as a seed. Seeds grow from the inside out. And that's something I always forget and I have to remember. So if you're trying to find the magic, it's already in you. You just, you just got to grow it from the inside out. By going on a fucking Disney cruise with me. <laughs> tell me, tell me another podcast where you're gonna get all of this. The only thing we're missing is the third non-comedic uh, Jim Carrey reference. But I think we did good. <laughs> oh fuck! Now I'm drawing a blank. I can't think of anything except except all the comedy. Ah, dag, nab it. That's okay. I'll go for a hat trick next time. <laughs> I'll try to. I'll try to name three Liam Neeson comedic roles. <laughs> I don't that think they exist. That, that would be, be tough. tough. You ever see that Ricky Gervais skit? No. Liam Neeson. Oh no. my god. <laughs> Should That's I find an old it? skit where Liam Neeson walks to Ricky Gervais's office. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, Ricky, I'd like to get into improvisational comedy, and 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 Ricky Gervais starts laughing, and, and he's like, Oh, you're you're serious? Like, yes. Uh, and he and then he starts going through the kinds of comedy he wants to do: slapstick, stand up, you know. 
and then they try doing some bits and like it's just it's re- it's really fucking funny oh i think i found it yeah i'll give yeah. it a i'll give it a watch i think uh, i can't remember his full name Sorry, I'm I'm jumping. Uh, Stephen Merchant. I think Stephen Merchant's there. Tall, it's called tall, uh, tall skinny guy, big head. He's in there. Or weird yeah. head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really funny. I think Warwick Davis is there for a little bit too. Yeah, he, yeah, he is there he too. Is there. <laughs> I see him in the preview. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have to watch that. <laughs> he runs into Liam Neeson. He's like, he's like, oh yeah, uh, Liam, we're working the Star Wars films together, and he's like, I don't remember you, and he just like walks right by him. <laughs> It's really funny, <laughs> but um, but that that's where it's at. I would say I would say if you have any inclination to get a Disney watch, if you're on Disney vacation, totally fucking do it. Eh, buy it from the Citizen website; probably get a better price for it. Have fun with it. Yeah, just have fun with it. Don't get stuck in the collector's mentality. Um, I don't know how to end the show. <laughs> I'll just keep talking about Disney stuff if you want. Definitely go and check out Disney War. Like I said, it's 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 it goes into a bit of the pre. Michael Eisner history and then catalogs the whole fucking train wreck of 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 everything that happened with Michael Eisner. Um, it doesn't cover Bob Iger taking over because the book gets published right around all the the, the 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 tumultuous nature of what was occurring. But it's uh, if you're at all interested, it's it's a really fun read. No, this was good. I think people got a good background, <clears throat> and yeah, I learned a lot. So, good episode. I think it's that time. Well, oh, it's, oh just, uh, uh, just, just, just before we go, this is not a Disney thing. Don't worry. Um, Michael and I are going to do our best to recommit to doing the show every two weeks. Now that things are, are, yeah, now that things are relatively normal, uh, or whatever normal is for me now, for me in my life, and now uh, we we went through a long process of just planning episodes, honestly, into the middle of next year the only thing that you know we're going to start working on is scheduling time getting the show out there and um it brings me a lot of joy it's we have we have some nice recordings some some good topics uh in the works so looking forward to good seeing you thanks for letting me talk at your face about disney for an hour and a half (laughs) i thought my wife liked disney (laughs) <laughs> she does she does the, the 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 problem is like you ever you ever watch a tv show and you're like who's that actor and you google that actor and you google and you go on the wikipedia page and then you go to the wikipedia page and you realize their dad's an actor and their dad knows someone that started this company and that company was owned by this company and then like four hours later the movie's over and you're just reading about like strawberries in sweden <laughs> like that that <laughs> that happens to me when i get into disney stuff you just look okay. stuff up and you're just you're just fucking lost forever you know <laughs> oh man that's funny I don't know. If, I don't know if that's ever happened. To I, I am else. one of those. I am one of those people. It's like, who's that person? I've seen them here before. Even with voice actors, I get kind of crazy. It's like I know that voice, and then I have that's to. That's interesting. It up. Yeah. Uh, I will say, you plugged the Mandalorian. You like the Mandalorian? Mando's good. I liked it. You know, even even the later seasons, I thought it was still pretty well done. Yeah. I would yeah. encourage you to watch Andor. We were talking about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's Andor is interesting. Do. It is the most non star warsy star wars show i could think of i'll check it out there's no jedi i'll get that there's, there's there's rebels there's imperials but like imperials there's the empire excuse me um it's interesting might have to be pirate bay but i'll watch it <laughs> Shh, what are you doing <laughs> you're gonna upset the shareholders the disney shareholders <laughs> Who aren't listening. I'm sure someone's listening. Um, well, let's do this. It's that sad time. I hope everyone really enjoyed this show. I had an amazing time, Michael, obviously talking with you. Uh, I clearly obviously fucking love you. I'm happy to be back online. Happy to be getting back into it. Hope everyone had a really good time. Let us know your thoughts on the show. If you watched us on YouTube, thank you so much. Let us know your thoughts in the YouTube comments. Um, you know what? If you have a Disney watch, which one do you have? Yes. Comment. Also, yeah, comment. Also, if you're... If you're like my dad and you were there opening day for Disney World and here in Florida or whatever, um, did you buy a watch? Is anyone is anyone an original purchaser of what we would call a vintage Disney watch right now? Let That'd us be kind of cool. That would be, be really cool. cool. That'd be really fucking cool. Let us know your thoughts. Definitely appreciate everyone's time. You can email us. It's tbws.contact at gmail.com. The email again is tbws.contact at gmail.com. Hit us up in the YouTube comments. You could try Instagram. 
That's a bit rough right now. We'll we'll catch up on that uh, next episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's do it, man. I'll let you I'll let you start it, and then I'll uh, I'll tuck the kids in. This was awesome. Thanks for listening, guys. My name is Mike, and this is Kaz. You have been listening to Two Broke Watch Knobs. Later.